afternoon, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here doing today's live follow-up webcast on the Trading Masterclass reversal patterns. Um, so looking at reversal patterns, you find the first video at justonelap.com slash masterclass. It's online. So reversal patterns in themselves, high risk. You know, typically, trends tend to continue. And and you know, anyone who's, who's looked at my the two previous sessions that we've done, which is the indices and the CFD trading plan, very much based on trends, although the CFD to a degree, a reversal back to trend. In other words, was heading down, uh, reversal, and then back onto a, an upward trend, as the example may be. Um, but certainly, consolidations and trends are the key. Uh, stocks or indices or currencies or commodities tend to continue on their trend and will occasionally reverse trends. It's, you know, and I suppose. You know, if you're looking at a 15-minute chart, you're going to see a lot more reversals because trends are much shorter in time frame. Uh, typically, I look at weekly charts, um, but certainly you can drop down to shorter time frames. I like weekly because those reversal patterns are then typically significantly stronger in the sense if it's a, if it's in a weekly chart. Uh, works across time frames, as I said, weekly is obviously the longer the chart, the stronger the reversal. But if you're going to trade in a five or 15 minute chart, that's fine. It just means that your average trade duration is going to be significantly shorter. Your profit per trade will be smaller because your trades are simply shorter. Um, and you've got to therefore make sure that your entries are very clean and that your stop losses are very tight and obeyed. By tight, I don't mean close. I mean, obey those stops. As you push that time frame out, you've got more wiggle room on your entry. You can give more wiggle room on your stops. Uh, and trends can then potentially run. If you're in a weekly chart, they could run forever in a day. Um, so as I said, I prefer the weeklies. The one point, and it, it's, I'm going to keep coming back to it, but I wanted to drop it in now, is that you know this is now the third masterclass that we have done. As I said, first was a CFD trading plan. Second was the uh, an index future, an index trading plan. And the point is quite simply is that we can trade different strategies, and a reversal is a separate strategy. You know, don't confuse your strategies. Have those different strategies in place, and be very clear when entering trades, which strategy you're on, why you're doing it, because that informs your entry criteria, your exits, your position size and everything else. So let's delve into them. The first was island reversals. Uh, I really like them, uh, but they are about the rarest thing I've ever seen. So there's the example I'm looking for. We've got one sitting up here. We've got one sitting down there. Very nice. I spent hours on the IG platform over the weekend and again Monday, um, and I didn't manage to find a single island reversal in a single top 40 share for this entire year. Now, in truth, I almost certainly did not look at every time frame, you know, five minutes, 15, 30, 60, four hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, but their rarity almost makes me think that they're an oddity and maybe best ignored. There is an issue with indices, uh, currencies, commodities, in that the close is always the open. I'm going to touch on that uh, uh, in, in a moment or two. But the island reversals, and uh, in, in my memory, I can remember three uh one was on Sassel, um one was on uh, kumba and both of those were way back in 2012 ish um and the third one was and now it's just left my mind it was one of the retailers uh in the top 40 but certainly rare enough that i think we can actually take it and say nice but no dice Brings us to our engulfing candles. A quick reminder of what the engulfing candle looks like. Um, so it is literally, we don't worry about the wicks. Uh, here we've got the black, or if you're in a red and green environment, it will be a red candle. It literally, the body engulfs the previous body. The low of that candle is then your entry, so you'd be entering at that red line. Uh, here in, an, in, an, in a reversal to the upside, we've been going down. We get that candle, which then gives the full body engulfing red line is your entry. I add a direction trend on it first. So if the seven EMA is above 21, then I will take them uh, longs only. And if it is below, then shorts only. You can use EMA, you can use SMA. I'm always a fan of kind of bringing in a little bit of, of, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, sort of wind at my back. So a little more to it than just simply take the the, the, the trigger in a, in a naked environment. Um, and, and there are a couple here that I want to I want to run through. The first trick, so engulfing candles, I used to trade them on the uh, uh, Aussie futures. 
But if you come to the chart here, and it's busy loading my internet connection, it's a good old fashioned telecom one. So what do we have here? You will note, uh, and at first it might not be obvious, but when you start to look deeply into it, is that pretty much every close is the same as the next open. Yeah, and yes, there's some there's some wiggles, but pretty much every close. So there is an engulfing candle on my Zar Mini. Um, my trend is the wrong way, so it's it's not working in that sense. But there is a, a one there. If I if I drop to to different time frames, we'll pick them up. We're currently on a weekly chart. So there was an engulfing candle, but my seven was below 21. So don't want to dice. I need to change those technicals. Uh, I don't want my MACD. Um, and I want EMAs, and I don't want the 100. So these are simple to change, and they will sit in place whilst you're there, and they will stay in place. Um, nice, but now I've got my MAs on there as well, so now I've got far too many. Let me take my MAs off the line. Now I've got just the two. Cool, technical's done. Uh, so there was my engulfing. But my seven was below my 21. So whilst it was actually a not a bad signal, because remember you would have then entered at the beginning of that candle pretty much as soon as it goes above the close, uh, you put your stop down probably about midway down, I wouldn't have taken it um, because of that 721. And I know what we're looking at here. We're saying, well, then should we be using the 721? Uh, that's your debate for me. Absolutely. I'm going to use the 721. I absolutely am. Uh, quick point over here on a weekly chart uh, and over there on a weekly chart, we've got those kangaroo tails. I'm going to come back to kangaroo tails. This one, a massively powerful kangaroo tail. When was that? That was August of last year. But in a weekly chart, nothing subsequent. Drop to daily. Uh, got the latest time there. We're in biz. So are we seeing any any uh, in, engulfing candles here? Uh, short answer One That one there So it was back in September. This is a daily chart gave you a self signal The seven had just crossed below the 21 a very very nice trade in, in, in that sense there on a daily chart um, So nice and simple nice and easy to have traded that would have done you some decent profits there. I'm always looking for the losing trades, and I've got some coming up. Otherwise, it looks like, you know, we're only showing you the winners, and then I'm retrofitting. Make no mistake, we're going to get losing trades. Um, but there was a, and it only just engulfs. And as I said, you don't worry about that work. Let me zoom that in a fridge and more. So we can see it a little bit better. Um, that wick that as it sits below doesn't concern me in the least. The wick of, is of no problem. There's the candle that engulfs. I go short at that uh, below the close, which was let's call 46,100. So I would have shorted there on 14 September at 46,100. And what I'm typically going to do here is I'm going to trail a stop loss. I'm in a daily chart. So I'm going to trail the stop loss probably at about 200 points, which would probably have seen me stop out uh, around here. Yep, we would have got down to a low of call it 4403. Stop would have been 44230. So we would have got stopped at that point there. Um, and that is frankly a perfect trade. I mean, not perfect in the sense, let me rephrase it. That's an ideal engulfing candle trade. I and mean, you hit it, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red candles that follow it. Um, and you get stopped on that seventh red candle and then it starts to turn on you. So that is going to be the rarity, but that's why I love the engulfing candles. And that's why I say go and trade them in a – you've got to trade a, 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 a reversal strategy, and you're not going to get a lot of trades in that space. Um, we're going back here a couple of months, and I'm not seeing – any others that are viable trades? Nope, none others whatsoever. Uh, shift our time frame. I'm going to go pick a random spot earlier in the year. Um, we've gone back to late last year, in fact. Uh, that candle, not engulfing. Um, that candle, so my close was 389. My open was 399, so that one doesn't engulf. So what I'm saying with that is that green candle there, open 10 points above the other one. So it didn't engulf. Now again, you can say, hey, 10 points. I do stress it. You know, I'm a system-based trader. I've got my rules in place. I want them to be rules. I want them to actually happen. Let's drop to a much shorter time frame. 
uh, and now we are back in today. Um, a significantly shorter time frame. There's one that looks trending. So my close was 557. My open was 555. Uh, 557, 555 didn't engulf. Um, ditto those two didn't. There's one that engulfed and it gave me uh, a nice signal. So my trend is higher. That one engulfs close was five four five five six three, so five six three we're in uh, daily uh, hourly chart. So I'm going to drop my my trailing stop to 100 points, um, and at that point we had a high of 704. So my stop 604. Uh, we're going to make some money, but we're not going to make a heck lot of money. 40 points over uh, within four hours. The beauty of it is that you put a guaranteed stop on, it's fire and forget. My engulfing candle system was designed for that. I actually initially traded it in 15-minute charts. And the point being is that, and particularly these days, so you load up the IG app, you're sitting at an airport waiting for an airplane, you're waiting for a, a, a date to arrive. No, that's a bad idea. Never trade before a date. Um, you're waiting for a meeting to start or, you know, whatever it might be. You're waiting for something. And whilst you're waiting, you have a look-see. And you get an engulfing candle, boom, you stick it on, you, 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 you put your trailing stop in place, you make it a guaranteed stop, and you walk away. And that, that, that was the attraction for me, and that's why I designed this system to be one that I can trade as and when, but when I'm not there, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and that gives me totally, totally blurry data. And I used to do it in a 15-minute, but you can do it in a 60-minute, in a an in hourly chart, probably that better picture. We get the trade, we put it on, we fire and forget, and we can walk away from the situation and and, and leave the system to, to, to manage itself. So even in this example here, we don't get a heck lot, but we make some yeah, we make ourselves some 40 odd points. We're not gonna knock that on the head. Uh, one I'm gonna pull up quickly is EOH. Because we had a massive engulfing candle on Friday on the daily chart. Uh, one hour is not what I want. I want my daily. My technicals haven't come come along, but anyway. So look at that candle there. A massive reversal, saying to us that we are heading down. Now I can tell you right now that EOH is almost certainly. Let's fix our let's fix our technicals. Let's take. So in a daily chart, you wouldn't have taken it. I certainly wouldn't have. And if you had taken it, you would have gone short initially, nice little bit down there, um, and then you would have got taken to the cleaners. Question is, is are we getting an engulfing candle to the upside? So the close on uh, yesterday was 1735950, and the open today was 17363. So nope. No, no engulfing candle coming through there. Um, otherwise, it would have been great. But there's the one I'm looking for. So there's a nice engulfing candle. You can see it. We're looking at a daily chart here. My seven above, is above the 21. A nice strong trending market. There is your 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 entry point. The question is, would you have you know what was your stop? And if your stop is too far, is too close you simply would have got yourself stopped out. But it's a great engulfing candle. And certainly we see them. I'm quickly, in this point here, it gets messy. Do we have another one triggering here? Uh, close, 1423750. Open, 142220. Yep. So there was another engulfing candle that we that we triggered uh, in, the, in that space there. So EOH, in part because of its low liquidity, does give us some nice engulfing candles on a on a daily chart. Um, as I said, that's a great one, but my 721 wasn't confirming, so I wouldn't have taken it, uh, which is nice in hindsight. If you had taken it, you were almost certainly stopped out for some loss there. Um, let's go pick up some others. The one thing I want to touch on is the that 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 open close and and we, we particularly on 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 the fx's on the commodities when we move to those highly liquid markets they become rarer and rarer so we really got to drop those time frames they're certainly there we picked up some there on the top 40 um the the sa40 as they call it in this environment so certainly we can i want to boogie across to mtn so i've got my notes here from the ones that i that i've run through um
Uh, on MTN, I'm wanting to be looking at a weekly chart. And now I can't remember what pattern I was picking up on myself on a weekly chart. Uh, there we go. Uh, nice and go, really nice engulfing candle there, but it's a buy signal. And seven is above 21. So you would have taken that only just because the close was many threes, 950. Remember, you enter above the close level. Um, and we traded there at just above so you would have got into that trade and almost immediately wherever you put your stop loss you you would have got stopped out in time um there's another one that you would have got into uh on the short side uh and you would have got stopped unless you really put a stop far away you would have got stopped on that there uh there's an engulfing to the downside you probably going to get a break even and anything in this mess here is just not going to have any fun on it because you just, I mean, you, you're going to get in. There's another one not to the downside. Uh, yep, that's another one that would have confirmed and probably stopped. What have we got here? This is uh, pretty much all of 2016. MTN has gone sideways in a relatively range bound market, just below 120 to just above sort of 140 up into the 150. Um, and you're going to get hurt. So if you drop your time frame down, maybe there's something in the in the shorter time frame here. Uh, that looks like an engulfing candle. Uh, the open was 407.50. The close open for uh, that. Uh, yes, hold on, it did, it did. Yeah, so that, no, that wasn't, it didn't, by just a rant, did not confirm. Um, so again, I'm not seeing, it was just those couple there in the longer time frame, and they were all managing to stop us left, right, and center, in a sense. Um, let's checking, no questions coming through, cool, cool. So let's drop MTN, uh, let's pick up another equity here, PSG. Uh, uh, question coming through, do you trade these with or without CFDs? Your call. Uh, absolutely, you can. Uh, remember, go look at our uh, bootcamp series. There's particularly one where we look at in terms of, excuse me, where we're looking at the different um, risk managements and the like and manage your risk. Keep that risk low. Keep the overall portfolio risk low. Don't get out of bounds on your risk. That will only but hurt you. Uh, PSG on a drop to PSG on a daily chart. There we go, cool and biz. Um, there's an engulfing candle, doesn't trigger because my seven is below my 21. There is a massive engulfing candle uh, and it triggers, where's your stop? On the equity side, you should really be putting your stop below that candle. Um, so you would have put your stop down around about the 190. You would have been entering at around about the 200 and 200 level and some cents. Stop at 190, 5% stop loss, not too bad. And you're probably running, and by now you've probably moved your stop up to around 202. Uh, so you're more or less at break even. Uh, going back in time, oh, there was the other one I was looking at. Again, but my seven is below my 21, so not applicable. So that's always going to be the trick is are they applicable? Let me actually go there because that'll help me find them easier. And. Let's go, folks, if you want to throw some stocks at me, uh, more than welcome to. We'll go have a look at some different stocks. Quite happy with that. Again, Sassel, really, really ugly. I thought we might get, this is a daily, I thought we were going to get an island reversal there. I was so excited when I spotted that. Uh, it was last week. There was a gap down and then a gap up. I suppose in a sense, you know, to me, an island reversal should be more than just one candle. But in truth, my rules don't state so. So we could call that right down at the bottom down there. We could say, okay, island reversal. Yeah, okay, we, we're in. And then we're in the long on Sassel, but not a not a heck of a lot really, really happening here at all. Um, but if we go back in some time, there was a great short trade for Sassel. So again, there's your daily chart. There's your island reversal. Absolutely, seven below 21. Island is reversing. Um, and you're running down. Your stop is going to be somewhere uh, around about uh, the 350 level, 
as it's falling, you will be winding your stop up. So what I would do is as we fall, I would then move it to there. Let me get some line drawings in place. I like horizontal lines. So my stop initially would have been there at around 350. My new stop after the pullback would be there at about 420. My next stop after a next pullback, and you'll just see what I'm doing here. I'm not getting too aggressive on them. My current stop Stop on Sassel would probably be somewhere round about the 390. Short answer from that engulfing candle, you could potentially still be short of Sassel. And that's just from a daily chart. Nice and simple. Uh, let's delete all of those. Delete all. Let's drop the drawings. Let's go to a longer time frame. What you are seeing, I just want to go back to this daily quick. What you'll note with the Sassel is that it didn't happen at that top up here at the 480. What it really happened was it started to fall, kind of tried to pull up and then went again. And that's the beauty, because if it happened up here, what we wouldn't have got was the 721s were the wrong way around. So that wouldn't have helped us at all. But here, because we've sort of got that trend, we're now heading down, the 721 is confirming that massive sell off there on the 6th of June, boom, nice and uh, engulfing candle. Weekly chart on Sasol, not sure. Oh, I mean, that's just that's just terrible, terrible noise. So there's one there, but my trend is the wrong way around. Uh, any others I'm seeing? Mm, no, not really. Uh, any others? There's one. Is that a green candle? Yes. Is my seven below my 21? No. So that doesn't confirm. My seven was still above my 21. I'm always going to be strict. On that 721 always 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 going to be strict on that 721 uh, I quickly want to go back here because um, the other one we were looking at were kangaroo tails and there were the examples that we ran there um, and and the short answer is uh, kangaroo tails are frankly few and far between um, it's that massive sell-off and then run again here it is on the indie we had it here there's myself a kangaroo tail that wasn't because I didn't have the reversal what I want is coming down Massive kangaroo tail market then runs again. So if we go back to here, um, where did I see myself? Now I've got to find myself somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I saw a nice one and it might be, let's go, is Aspen top 40? So here's Aspen. We are sitting on a weekly chart and I know that if I go back, so on a weekly chart, there's one uh, back in December. Um, you might have made some money. The stop would have been there. You probably would have broken even at best, maybe taken a small loss. That was a trend higher. Uh, does that candle engulf? So my high and low is 079 and the low is 601. Uh, 079, 601. No, it does not. Um, what I'm struggling to do is to program it, which is the problem. So here is a nice engulfing candle. Let's go to my drawings. Let's delete all. Let's bring in a horizontal line. Um, where did it disappear to? There. So there's a nice engulfing candle, seven below the 21. Uh, initial stop loss, I would have put just above the candle there. And then you see what it does. It comes down. It rallies higher. It fails. It goes lower again. That's when I'm going to move my stop loss to just there. It's a tiny move. But you put a guaranteed stop on. What does it do? It goes back. It rallies higher. It falls down again. I'm going to bring my stop loss to around about there. Um, then it falls down, rallies higher. Do you want to get aggressive with the stop loss and stick it in there? I worry that that last positioning on the stop loss is some hindsight bias um, where, we, where, where we are pretty much saying, you know, we can now see what happens. So absolutely, you wanted to take it. Um, but certainly, we had the run down, a little bit up, more run down and then running again. And this is a weekly chart. So this, this trade, wherever we get stopped, even if we're getting hit at that point there, we made a modest profit. There was our entry at the close. So we shorted at around 310. Uh, maybe we stopped out at around 376 and change. But we shorted back in uh, August of last year, and we are stopped somewhere around uh, Feb of this year. If you ran a later stop, you're stopped somewhere around April of this year. Question coming through, well spotted. So we actually got a buy signal on the other system with the the uh, uh, Aspen. That buy system, and I can't remember, but it was probably just looking at a weekly chart. I'm going to say to you it was around there. 
I can bring it in quick because we were using MACD. Where is my MACD? Correct, Amanda. So my buy signal was somewhere there. In fact, I was probably, those parallel lines were probably my entry on that initial buy signal. The trick is, so then now we've got, and, and let's, you know, we're getting a stop at the same time as we're getting a buy. Actually quite nice, taking you out of a short on, SAS, on, on Aspen, putting you into a long on Aspen. Like it. But sometimes it's not going to be quite so clean. So sometimes there's going to be overlap and you're short and long of Aspen. So what do you do? Well, you can use that new signal to exit the trade and, and get out entirely or to exit the trade and switch from short to long. But also you can, you know, if you trade different systems, when I traded Aussie back in the day, day trading, and I would trade different systems in different time frames, I would trade in three different accounts because sometimes I would have some positions going short and some positions going long. There would always be a skew. I'd be more long or more short. And the question which I never managed to really resolve was, am I not just being stupid? But in essence, what I was doing was, so what I started to do was, let's say I'm short 10 contracts. And then I get a buy signal for five. Rather than buying those five, what I do is I reduce my short by five. Because otherwise, I'm net still five short, but I'm not incurring all the costs and everything. So if I'm net 10 short, if I'm 10 short, and then I go five long, I've now got 15 contracts out there. I've had to cross 15 spreads. I've got 15 uh, transaction fees. Instead, I would just close off. So if you're in the Aspen and, you get, and you're short and you get the buy signal, just close and, and maybe go long. But just, you know, don't have a long and a short position in Aspen. There's only one person who's going to make money from that. Barclays Africa Group. Uh, entry. So entry on the reversal candles question coming through. So there is your candle that that that, that does the, the reversal. I basically the low of the candle, not the wick, the body of the candle. As soon as the next candle opens and we are below that red line that I've drawn, we are short. Ditto if we're going long, as soon as the next candle opens and we are above that, that previous close, which is the red line, I'm going to go short. Uh, where am I going? I'm going there. So Barclays Africa Group, the question is, is that a massive kangaroo tail? And the short answer is yes, because let's pretend, and I can actually do this, I can clean all that data out. I want to remove the other stuff. So what do we have here? So let's give it a little more wiggle room here so we can get a much better sense. And let's give us just one extra week there. Let's take it to there. So there's my kangaroo tail. So certainly we've been coming down a bit on Barclays. There's a massive kangaroo tail on Barclays. That is 7 December. That is, make no mistake about it, the week where we had three finance ministers in four days, our weekend special. Now we're going to see that kangaroo tail all over the place. What we get, though, however, is a massive kangaroo tail, which gives us an entry, which we would have done in the next candle, because the next candle is, is above the close there. And... If we then take it all the way out, so there was our entry. So initially, stop halfway down the tail, which I'm going to do a rough line, which is probably round about 120-ish or so. Um, yo, do we survive? Low, 120.02750, oh, So, uh, yeah, okay. So I put that, st I would have put, yeah, okay. So technically we survived. Um, the point is you would have been moving that stop higher. So you would have got the entry. You would have entered into Barclays Africa Group at around about, uh, what was the the open there? Around 136 would have been your entry. Um and it ran as high as 150. As soon as it started to pull back, you would have had your stop moved higher and you would have got taken out. But we're going to see a lot of them for that week. And, and that's the point of a strategy is that, you know, you, you might sit and wait for a long time for something to come along. But when it does come along, you've got the strategy in place. And it's what I always say to folks is you need to know what you're doing. You need to know the system. It's why I say if, you, if you're new to IG, First thing you do is you spend a month or so basically just going along doing doing a demo account. So you know how to make it work. Uh, Darren, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Clive, I'll get to that in a second. I fear probably not. Um, let me get rid of my drawings. 
So we're looking at Capitec. Um, is that a is that a, rev a kangaroo tail? In truth, it would have been. It's nice. It qualifies. We would have put ourselves a stop loss halfway down that tail, uh, and we would have almost immediately got stopped. Yeah. I, I, that's just you know. So I mean, I can fudge it, right? I can put it below. What I'm what I'm looking at is that wick there. Um, in truth, almost anywhere up at that stop, we would have then you know. So Let's do the math 100%. So what is the, bear with me, folks. The low is 41069. The uh, close is 45978. I need to subtract those. Uh, so we've got 69 and 22 is 91. Half of that is 45. So my stop would have been at... 45 below that would have been at 9.23. 45.9.23. Where did we go? Yeah, stopped. <laughs> nice idea, but that would have caught us. There's a nice kangaroo tail, but that would have caught us. Um, so we would have got it, and then we would have got booted out. There's another kangaroo tail, uh, which would have lasted better for us. Kangaroo tail, I'm not stressing the 721 moving averages. They're still there. I'm ignoring them. We're coming down. There's a nice kangaroo tail. My stop loss gets put halfway down. Uh, where is my halfway down? It's around about there. Um, it runs as it's running. I'm moving it higher. We might have got stopped in that green candle. What I'm not going to do now is retrofit, because I'm going to make the perfect stop. We may have, we may not have. That's the honest answer. We, unless we go back in time and play it bar by bar. Um, and then maybe we caught the run. Are we getting any engulfing candles? I had thought I had seen an engulfing candle here. I might have seen it. Let's remove those from the equation. Uh, oh, there's my engulfing candle, but my trend is down. Seven is below the 21. I don't take it. Uh, there's an engulfing candle. Um, and seven is above 21. I take it. I get stopped, um, I confirm, I get stopped almost immediately thereafter, and then I get that next one that's coming through there. Uh, so let's look at some stocks that are asking questions. Richmond. Richmond's just ugly. I can tell you that before the chart loads because I own it. And then I have so many Richmonds I might get to. So what are we looking at here? Weekly chart. What are we looking for? Kangaroo tails. We're looking for anything that gives us hope, really. We're cheating here. But are we seeing any kangaroo tails? Are we seeing engulfing candles? Yes, there is an engulfing candle to the downside. That engulfing candle, when you first enter it on a weekly chart, your stop is there. Uh, you then would have probably moved your stop at some point to round about there. You've probably now just been stopped out of it in the last couple of weeks, probably earlier in August. Um, so there was a nice trade there. Any others that we that I'm seeing? Let's drop to daily chart. Uh, what are we seeing here? Are we looking for for any any hints of reversal? So we're not getting any kangaroo tails. We're not getting any island reversals. That doesn't mean the stock isn't reversing. I mean, but, you know, and, and we've got some flag patterns and the like coming here, but I'm not going to start moving into flag patterns today. That that's I, I don't trade flag patterns. I don't trade pretty much any patterns. Um, but is there any hope? We're getting some attempts at, 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 at engulfings there. We got, no, that's not a reversal in color. Short answer, Richmond still looking, yeah, looking ugly-ish. Uh, what's the lowest price I've paid for my Richmonds? 82.50. Uh, actually, no. I've, I've, in, in the current range, I think I've got some Richmonds from the mid 70s, but that's from way, way back in time. Uh, in the recent sell-off, it's 82.50. The other one we were looking for was Avenge. Yeah, Clive. Certainly, we are seeing some higher lows. So there, there are some glimmers of hope there. But, but you know, I'm in the same boat as you. Assuming you also hold it, uh, my sense is really glimmers of hope. Firstly, that is not a kangaroo. So this is a bench chart. We're in a daily chart. That's not a kangaroo tail because it's running up. It's a, it's a, it's a sell down. To my mind, a kangaroo tail must be more at the bottom. Um, I'm going to drop to a weekly chart first because that'll give us a much stronger picture. Uh, 
So it was coming down, was getting absolutely pummeled. Everything was ugly. Uh, did we get sell signals? We probably got, I mean, there's a short signal there on Avenge. You probably got stopped on it. Do we have any others? There's another one on Avenge um, at around about the 12 Rand, 11 Rand 30 sort of level. That would have been a very, very nice trade. Um, and that's why I used the 721 because it's telling me what that big picture is. And, and, and to me, you want to go in that direction um, of, of, of that, that, that bigger picture. So the, the, the reversal is almost the shorter term. Still in the weeklies, um, anything here that would have got you in. So there was another sell signal on the weekly chart and would have got you stopped out. In fact, that was pretty much just off the bottom. Um, the trend has now changed. We're now in an upward trend from here, but I'm not seeing anything that excites me in that space there. Uh, there is an engulfing candle to the downside, but Avenge trend is now up, so not applicable. And if we go to daily charts, so there's one down there, and I'm hesitant to say, is it really? My open at 403, my close at 450, no, it's a green candle. So I can't quite see it. Maybe I need glasses, but there was a green candle. Um, I don't see, so I'm, I'm not seeing anything here except that this is a stock that currently is moving higher and looking stronger. Um, there was another one I wanted to pull up. Oh, I wanted to pull up NASPASS. First rule of NASPASS, don't short it. Second rule of NASPASS, never short it. Petrus, there probably is a third rule of NASPASS, and it's probably... Don't short it. <laughs> um, what do we see on NASPASS? We see a fairly wild stock that really goes all over the place. It gives us gaps. And again, there might have been a, 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 an island there, but it closed quite naturally without an actual island coming through. More, I mean, just gaps galore. I mean, this NASPASS is just volatile. A semi-island there, but didn't, didn't crack it. Um, so he has your buy signal, but the 721 is the wrong way, so it doesn't confirm. Um, there's a sell signal, but your 721 is the wrong way around, doesn't confirm. Um, that was a red candle, so the next red doesn't count. Um, this is not a chart you want to be trading. I mean, you know, yeah, I know there's money, but the better advice for NASPASS is just somewhere, if you're brave enough, just buy it and stick it in your bottom drawer. Do we get anything better looking on a weekly chart? Short answer, not really. Although I fear we do. That's a red one. Uh, and it closes at 6449. That's a green one that opens. So there's a confirming golfing. So in fact, you did. You went long at that point, and for once in its life, NASPASS did a pullback, and you took a bit of a bath. That was November of last year. NASPASS did a pullback, and you took a bit of a bath. Um, so folks, I'm going I'm to park it there for now. If you've got some questions, pop them in. But I've certainly covered what I want to look at. Key thing. So of the three we looked at, Island reversals, man, their scarcity means know what they are, recognize them when you see them, expect to probably never trade one in your life, maybe two or three in the next 20 years or something. Um, kangaroo tails, powerful, fairly rare. Typically, they need some big events like three fin finance ministers in four days. Um, again, know what they are, recognize them when you see them. Don't trade it on the uh, just on the whim of it. Have a strategy that says, I'm going to trade I'm going to have a strategy of reversals, and these are the reversals I'm going to use. So when you see when you see it, you've got your strategy in place, you've got your idea, you move in, and off you go. Engulfing candles, they're the one. They are absolutely the one. And I remember Riet Kotso once saying to me, um, so how I discovered these is when I was still at Standard Bank, we, her and I were designing a course, a TA course. We were sitting in front of a Bloomberg terminal and watching Top 40. Uh, or Aussie futures, and she says, hey, there's an engulfing candle. We were in a 15-minute chart, and I think nothing of it, and off we go to have a cigarette, and we come back a while later, and the markets moved 200 points, and I'm like, hang on, tell me more about this engulfing candle. So she did. Um, there's two things that I like about engulfing candles. They've got some prevalence in that they're happening. They're actually there from time to time, so there's stuff that we will trade. I'm not a fan of trading too much, but the flippers, you know, a trade every six months is useless. You want, you know, you want some trades coming through. So use a universe such as top 40 and say within the top 40, 
on a daily chart, I'm going to look for these and or a weekly chart. Um, and as they come, you can trade them. There will be enough for you. The 721 holds you out of some trades. It holds you out of some winning trades. I'm comfortable with that. I have absolutely no problem with that. If you do, change it, throw it out, use a MACD, use nothing. I mean, that's your call. You've got to make this a system that you that you like and trust. Uh, if you're going to uh, drop your time frame, then do the SA40, do the cash market, um, and you can trade down to one hour or a 15-minute chart or something like that. As I said, when I was looking at international indices, when I was looking at currencies, open and closes because of the liquidity are pretty much just the same. You get so few, it's again, frankly, not worth the time. So to my advice really is a case of uh, go and trade yourself the the the, the engulfings um, and then wait for them to happen as and when they do. The key point, always the key point, is start with a demo account so that you understand how the processes work, so that you test it. Um, go look at that New Year's resolution from the boot camp uh, and then throw your questions. Absolutely throw your questions. We are back. That 5th of October is now. We're back again 11 October with, with, with binary options. Uh, mostly binary options, the, the answer is simple. Don't. Uh, if you are going to, there's some ways we can get clever. I've got some ideas. We've got some strategies. We've got some plans and then trend lines. Uh, and then, as always, contact details and, as always, legal disclaimers. Ladies and gents, thanks very much for your time today. Uh, we will see you next week in the binary one. Cheers all.